Hello, everybody. This is Cody Bateman. Welcome to our Relationship Marketing Weekly Show. We are so excited today. I'm coming to you live from uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, I'm very, very excited about this interview today. Uh, let, let me just caution you right now. You, you need to have a pen, you need to have a pad of paper, and take some really good notes today. We have the one and only Dr. Ivan Meisner, the founder of Business Network International, known as BNI. Ivan, welcome to the show here today. Thanks, Cody. It's uh, great to be on, and it's great talking to you again. It's been a while. Oh, it has, and it's it's an honor to be with you. We had a little pre-show and just kind of got caught up, and Ivan's already told me a whole bunch of stories that just really inspire me today. So we'll just continue that conversation for everybody else to listen to. I really need to share a little bit about who this guy is. You know, there's a lot of people on here today that, that know you well, Ivan, but there's others who don't know you well and are just getting familiar with BNI and, and what, what you have done over the years. So I really kind of need to share some of your accomplishments here. I know here's what's funny is Ivan, he's a little uncomfortable with this. He's a very humble guy, which is one of the things I love about him. But guess what, brother? I got to share some of your accomplishments just for a second. And uh, so this is Dr. Ivan Meisner. He's coming to us uh, live from his home office in Austin, Texas. He's known as the father of modern networking. Uh, he's the founder and chief visionary off uh, officer of Business Network International. Uh, this is the world's largest business network organization. Now, I want to share with you some numbers just so you understand the significance of what Ivan has been able to build over the years. He established this, started in 1985 and have been building it ever since. We're talking there are 224,000 global members of BNI. This is a huge global organization. Uh, it's, um, it has 8,001, this is as of today, 8,138 global chapters. So each chapter has on average uh, 26 to 30 members that I think is the blended average of each chapter. So these chapters are all over the world. Now listen to these numbers. Now you might think this is just a little social gathering and, and the BNIs uh, typically meet once a week. And some of you may think this is just a, a little gathering once a week. Let me share with you what they generate. This is mind boggling. Okay, so in the last 12 months, <laughs> There, uh, these chapters have generated 9.5 million referrals. That's generated $13.8 billion in business revenue for its members. So this is not just a get together chapter. This is, uh, th this, this is an organization that gets results from people. So Ivan, uh, with that, uh, I just wanna welcome you to the call. What I'd like to do right up front if you can just tell us a little bit about uh, two things. There's two things I'd like, like to start with. The first is just tell us a little bit about how a chapter works and what is the driving philosophy behind the chapter. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, happy to do that. And, and, and by the way, $13.8 billion worth of business. And for referrals for our members, just so you know, Cody, $13.8 billion is the same as the gross domestic product for the country of Liechtenstein. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's a, it's a small country, I know, but still how cool is that? Cool. that we're, you know, we're generating as much business for a small nation. Now I'm looking for a bigger nation next year, but I think it's a great start. So you asked um, what is a chapter and what's our uh, core philosophy? So we have 8,100 plus uh, chapters. We allow one person per professional category to, uh, to be in a chapter of BNI. Many chapters have send out cards representatives and they've been in BNI for many, many years. So it's been a long-term great relationship between our two organizations. We have one person per profession. We get together every week and our sole purpose is to build relationships and pass each other referrals. Our principal core value, um, we have seven core values, and, and I think that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture is so important in an organization, and I know Santa Cards has a fantastic culture. I had the opportunity to speak at one of your conventions, and, and wow, I do so many uh, uh, keynotes, and they're really mercenary. You go in, you do your thing, and you leave, but I really felt like I was with a lot of people, a, a lot of friends. I mean, it was just, it was a great experience for me. Thank you. So I think 
Culture is so important. In BNI, our principal core value is giver's gain. If you want to get business, you have to be willing to give business to other business professionals. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's a way to build a solid foundation for a long-term business. So, you know, I, I recall the old days going to those networking events and everybody's collecting business cards and everybody's there, like you mentioned, to get business. And when you started this in 1985, you simply, uh, what I love about your foundational philosophy is how simple it is. You just flip-flopped it. You just said, look, we're not here to get business. We're here to give business. And then allow the law of reciprocation to take care of itself. Yeah. Personally, my humble opinion, I really believe that's one of the key reasons for your massive success is the drive, that giver's gain driving philosophy is phenomenal. So congratulations for that, really. Thank you. You know, we don't teach this in colleges and universities. We don't teach networking, referral marketing. Um, and, and so what happens is people, they just go out, they start trying to, to build their business and they go right into sales mode and they use networking as a face-to-face -face cold calling opportunity instead of a relationship building opportunity, which is what it should be if it's done right. Now, you told me a story uh, just in our little pre-show. You, you told me a story about you just recently spoke at an event. Yeah. You asked a key question. It kind of relates to what we're talking about. Can you share that with us? I did. I spoke in London. It was, it was a little while ago. And, and um, there were about 900 people in the audience. And I asked everyone there. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't an industry event. So there were, you know, 900 people. And they were probably from 500 different professions, many, many different professions. And I asked them, I said, how many of you are here today hoping to, you know, maybe just possibly sell something? Cody, I had 900 people raise their hand. I said, okay, second question. How many of you are here today hoping to, you know, maybe just possibly buy something? No one raised their hands. Not one single person. This is what I call the networking disconnect. People show up at networking meetings wanting to sell, but they're not there to buy. And that's why you go to meetings sometimes and you feel like you need a shower afterwards because everyone's trying to sell to you. Now, you have a book titled uh, Networking Like a Pro. I'd like you to talk a little bit about that because in that book, you, you really talk about these philosophies and tell all kinds of stories. Just share that with us. Yeah, sure. So the first edition of the book uh, is out now, but the second edition is coming out in just a few weeks. And, uh, and I can tell you the page on the second edition. This is the book, by the way. This is the second edition, Networking Like a Pro. Uh, I think you can do advanced orders online. But here's the thing is on page 202, uh, I uh, talk about uh, send out cards. And I have mentioned send out cards in probably four or five of my books. And the only reason I keep doing that is that I think it's a fantastic product. And, it, and it's perfect for building networking relationships. Um, and so our topic today is, is the follow-up. And it's in that follow-up that I highly recommend send that cards. Excellent. So yeah, the topic is, is follow up. That's, that's per your request is you really want to uh, uh, discuss the, the keys to follow up. In fact, um, you had mentioned that there's, uh, you've done, you, it, what I like too about you is you do all kinds of smart, I call them smart people studies. You do, you, you're a smart people study guy and you do a lot of studies on stuff. Seven top characteristics of a great networker. Can you share with us a little bit about what that, that what that is? Well, I surveyed about I surveyed about thirty four, almost thirty five hundred people from all over the world. They weren't just BNI members; it was open to the public. And I asked them, "What do you think? What do you think the top characteristics of a great networker were or are?" By the way, almost all of them were relational oriented. And almost all the characteristics of the um, uh, poor networkers were very transactional. Uh, so one of the top seven was follows up. That someone who uh, is uh, good at networking is somebody who knows how to follow up effectively. And I thought that plus the fact that I mentioned send out cards in this follow up section um, is a great topic to talk about because if you want to build a relationship, it, it has to start somewhere. And where it starts is you make that first meeting, you meet somebody, and now you got to follow up and connect with them again. And so uh, I, I, I think that the, this is a perfect topic for the beginning of building relationships. with people. Excellent. And speaking of, you have a system known as the 24-7-30. I think this is a great time to talk about, about that because 
you get into the core of how to how to create relationships called the 24 7 30 system i know you talk about that in your book can you just share a little bit of that with us right now yeah absolutely so um 24 7 30 if, if you can just remember that it's pretty easy to remember what you should be doing within 24 hours you meet somebody at a networking event you go to a chamber event or maybe you're at bni and uh, you're maybe you're visiting a bni or maybe you're a member of bni and somebody visits and you want to follow up with them within 24 hours i say reach out to them and touch them just connect just say hi um a great message might be, hey, it was really nice meeting you at that event yesterday. Um, I, you know, I enjoyed what you said about your meeting or I enjoyed our discussion. I hope our paths cross again. Something simple. Now listen to me. Don't sell to people yet. Don't do that. All too often people, you know, they follow up and it's immediately, hey, I've got a great business opportunity or I have some products that you might want, uh, you might be interested in or whatever. Look, it happens when you go to networking meetings. You will run into people who want your product or service, but that's not what networking is about. Networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about cultivating relationships. So you want to just make a connection. You just want to say hi. And so one of the best ways to do that, and I, this is where I talk about it on page 202, send a send out card to someone uh, because I'm horrible at doing handwritten notes, but send out cards is a great way to connect with people. Uh, e you know, email works, but it's, it's impersonal. Mm -hmm. Getting something through the mail is like so old school. Nobody does it. You'll stand out, send them something and just tell them it was nice meeting them. That's the 24. You want to hear the seven? Yep. So the seven, seven's kind of interesting. The seven, um, is that within seven days, you connect with them on social media. But here's the thing, and here's the interesting part, is that you gotta connect with them where they are, not where you are. And I learned this from my kids. Matter of fact, just today, entrepreneur.com published an article um, that I did uh, on the 24 7 30, and they, and they tell this story about how my, my kids taught me something about networking. And here it is quick. My eldest daughter, at one point, uh, when, she, when, when she moved out, I would call her on my phone. She never answered, never answered. But I learned that if I texted her, she'd respond immediately. So like, okay, I'll text her. My next daughter, uh, she didn't know that the phone actually had an earpiece. <laughs> I, I never talked to her on it. And texting was so old school. But my wife told me, look, connect with her on WhatsApp, and she'll respond to you. And I'm like, I don't even know what WhatsApp is. But I downloaded WhatsApp so that I could connect with her and have her respond. Then my son, my youngest, he didn't know how to use a phone, didn't like texting. And of course, email, forget about all of them. Uh, but uh, he was a, he's an online gamer. So he, I found out he was on this game called Steam, which was online and had an instant messaging feature. So I actually downloaded Steam. <laughs> Because I could, I could message my son and say, hey, buddy, what are you doing with this or that? And he'd respond immediately, but he wouldn't respond in any other way. Now, here's why I'm telling you this story. You want to connect with people in seven days. It doesn't matter where you hang out. It matters where they hang right, out. Right. If you want to build a relationship with them, you got to learn how to, to, to sell and to network effectively. And that means you need to be where they are. And so find out if they're active on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter and, and connect with them in seven days. And by connect with them, I mean comment on their posts. Um, you know, give some feedback, make it positive, And just every now and then, not every day, not 10 times a day, but periodically just, just touch them. Okay. So that's seven. Oh, and don't sell to them. Okay. Everybody getting the message. Everybody getting the message. So. It's like, it's, I think people sometimes have sales Tourette's. Yeah, yeah. They just can't stop themselves. It's just, you know, they blurt it out. 30, within 30 days, reach out to them. Now here, you can, you could call them or you can send another card and say, Hey, it was, um, it was great meeting you a month ago. Uh, I've been following some of the things that you've done online, really found this interesting or that interesting. And uh, I'd love to meet with you and learn more about what you do. And if you have some time, maybe you can learn about what I do. And set up an appointment. 
where you can sit down with them, have a one-to-one, -one, and this is the beginning of the relationship building process. And don't forget, whatever you do, don't sell to them, even now. Give it some time. Look, if they want your business, they'll tell you. They'll tell you, but even a blind squirrel can find a nut. You know, you can stumble over the business. You know, Ivan, I think, I think part of the challenge with a lot of new people coming into business or even, even old school people that have done business a certain way for many years, the, heart, the, the, the disconnect they have with what you're saying right now, it's solid foundational philosophy that works wonders, but a lot of people hesitate because what I've noticed is that people are looking, they're, they're looking for the home run. Like, yeah. it's like, it's like I, I met somebody and by golly, they are my ticket. And so it becomes this, you know, I'm going to chase that person until I hit the home run versus just consistently creating relationships over time and allow the home run hitter to show up naturally. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. You're absolutely right. And, and I just did an interview with Inc.com and we talked about this very topic and if you, if you do a search on Inc, uh, the topic is, um, I think the, in the title is called Networking Up, where you're trying to find that home run. And I'm here to tell you, it's even worse to try to sell to them. So let's say you're talking to somebody who's really successful. They are the person you want. And, and so, and what I have people do with me all the time is this, well, it never hurts to ask, right? Wrong, totally wrong. <laughs> completely wrong. If you ask before there's any kind of relationship, you got to know, like, and trust people. And if you have no relationship and you ask them, not only are they going to tell you no, you have now lost any opportunity to possibly do business with them in the future. Check out that Inc.com article. And I'm, I promise you, I give you very specific. Uh, when I met uh, Jack Canfield, the Chicken Soup for the Soul author, this is what I did. When I met Richard Branson, this is what I did. And I give very specific examples about what you want to do so that you can connect with them again because they're they just they're bombarded with people trying to sell to them. Bad idea. Yeah. Well, it is. It's a matter of just transitioning your mind to think exactly opposite, yeah. even of what you've learned in business school. Like you said, this stuff is not taught in your business schools today. It's kind of funny. I, uh, I, I had a gentleman that was uh, speaking at one of our events a while back and both of us are really ingrained in the giver's gain philosophy. And it was so funny because when I first started interacting with this gentleman, you know, I was applying the principles and so is he. So I was like, Hey, you know, tell me about you. Tell me about your business. You know, how can I help you? What kind of things do you like mm -hmm. to do? How can I be of service to you? And then he'd come back and say, well, enough of me. Tell me about you. And yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we kind of got caught in the giver's side where, <laughs> I mean, it was kind of funny. We joked about it afterwards, but you want to get to that state where yeah. the, you're completely disconnected with the outcome. Yeah. Again, it's in all the relationship marketing shows we've done over the previous weeks, we've interviewed some incredible business owners. It's, it's being intentional with your relationships. It's, it's, it, it, it becomes business becomes life, not just business, but life in general becomes about relationships period with yeah. a complete disconnect on business right and it's it's you teach this all over the world so tell us a little bit about the challenge of overcoming that that the issue that people have with this well i think the, the secret is that it, is to, to understand that it really is not an effective way to build build business you know if you're out there hunting you basically eat what you kill that day yeah. uh, but if you're farming and you're getting you're building it based on referrals then then it's a long-term strategy for an immensely successful business. The problem is exactly what you said. People meet someone, they think this is a great opportunity, and when that happens, it's, there's a sense of desperation that comes across. You may not realize it, but I'm here to tell you, I see it all the time. There's a sense of desperation, and desperation is not referable. Right. It's just not referable, and so instead, you want to build the relationship. I and mean, that's what I love about you doing this, this uh, theme for your podcast is about relationships. It's all about relationships. And if you don't get that, then you're, you're just never going to build a solid, uh, powerful personal network. Yeah, absolutely. 
you know, you, you mentioned referrals in there, and I, I got to make sure I got this right. Um, you uh, also uh, tell us about your um, the referral institute. A little bit about the referral institute, because not only you're the greatest networker guy, but I mean you're kind of the master at helping people generate referrals in their business. And we always talk a lot about referrals on this show. Tell yeah. us about the referral institute and what you've learned there. Referral Institute, which is now transitioning to the name Ascentive, A-S-E-N-T-I-V, um, is really um, my answer to the fact that we don't teach this in colleges and universities. Now, if you're, in a member, if you're a member of BNI, we teach you how to network in BNI. But there's a much broader um, concept of networking. Uh, you know, how do you network in a, in, a, in a chamber? How do you network in service clubs? How do you build your business through relationship building? And so uh, Ascentive Referral Institute um, really tries to fill the gap that we're not teaching in school. So, you know, it's, it's like getting a graduate degree in uh, referral marketing. And, and, and I put that together because, really because of my reaction to the fact that we don't teach this in colleges and universities. And by the way, I'm a 16 year, I, 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 was, I was an adjunct professor for 16 years. I know the system. Uh, I was on the board of trustees for a university for eight years. So I know the university system. I'm here to tell you, we're not going to teach it anytime soon. We don't even teach sales yeah. in most universities. You think we're going to teach networking? It's not going to happen anytime soon. Wow. It's incredible. So how would somebody, there's a lot, again, there's a lot of people on here that this is the first um, uh, exposure to BNI. How would somebody go about learning more and about be, or about, about becoming a member of one of your chapters? Oh, go to BNI.com uh, and look up, uh, find a chapter near you. Uh, and uh, if, if you know someone, if you've heard someone talk about BNI, uh, have a conversation with them first. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, maybe they can bring you into their group. Um, if not, then go to BNI.com, uh, reach out, and um, you tell them that uh, BNI and Send Out Cards has a very, very long history of supporting each other and that you would like to just visit a group. Uh, find a group that, uh, I would look for a group that has, a, has great energy. It's really positive. Uh, you want to find a chapter uh, of people that you want to surround yourself with uh, so that they can help you build your business. Uh, that, that's what I do. Go to BNI.com. By the way, uh, also on my website, IvanMeisner.com, tons of content. So if you like some of the things I'm talking about here, you can get a ton of content all free at IvanMeisner.com. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, I want to close the show with a, uh, a very serious topic. It's very fresh on my mind, has been for quite a while, even before it got crazy out there in the world is, you know, I, I truly believe that my calling in life, if you will, is to do everything I can to bring the human race together. And we live, we live in a day and age right now where this is needed more than at any time in our history. I mean, we, we're seeing some great separation in the world today. One of the things I love about what you're doing, Ivan, is that, is that you have a very positive influence out there with these chapters that does bring people together. So I applaud you for that. Thank you. Uh, the parting thoughts, I just want to get your thoughts on what do we need to do as a people to, to bring, bring us back together again? What are your thoughts on that? You know, I, I believe that we as an individual, I, let me speak for myself. I believe that I, as an individual, may not be able to make a world of difference, but I can make a difference in the world. I believe that 33 years ago when I started BNI, it wasn't my goal to change the world. It was my goal to change an individual life, to help one person and then another person and then another person. And you change the world by changing individual lives. We all have people who are in our story. Right. I, I, I'm sure you do, Cody. I, I certainly do. People who just did a little thing in my life and it changed it immensely. So the question I like to ask when, when this kind of topic comes up is it's not who's in your story. The real question is whose story are you in? Wow. That's the real question. Who's out there saying, um, boy, this person made a huge difference in my life. That's when you know you're changing the world and you're doing it just a little bit of, at a time. And that's all we can really, that's all I've ever tried to do is change it just a little bit at a time. Wow. 
Well, Ivan, we certainly appreciate the time that you've spent to be on here. Uh, it's just incredible to, uh, speaking with you. You're always a wealth of, of knowledge and information. Hopefully, you all had a chance to take great notes, and we're looking forward to – you might want to, if you have time, you might want to tune in next week. We're, we are going to interview next week uh, a guy that, that he lives up in Vancouver, uh, up on the island, the Vancouver Island. And he's, he's, a, he's a timber guy. He goes out and he, he prunes trees and, he, and you know, he's big time timber guy, big old chainsaws, a whole bit. We are literally gonna interview him. He is gonna be in his bucket in the top of a tree to wow. interview. And the reason is, is because he uses our system to follow up with people right at the top of the tree. So he'll go prune trees awesome. uh, in somebody's yard. And while he's up in the tree with his smartphone, he'll take a picture of somebody down, you know, take a picture of the home that he's there to service. Oh, nice. He sends him a thank you card. So, you know, oh, like, it's it's that, it, it, he's, he's it, I think you're seven, uh, well, let's see, seven, Hang on. Six degrees of separation. Is that what you're going to say? No, no, no. You're, you're uh, 24, 7, 30. Oh, 24, 7, 30. Yeah. I think that even applies, you know, you, you're, you applied that to when we, we talked about when you meet somebody, you have the 24, within 24 hours, you reach out to them. Within seven days, you hit them on Facebook. You know, within 30 days, you reach out to them again. Yeah. I think the same thing applies to follow up. Even after you've, you've done business with someone, True. that's what this guy does. Within True. 24 hours, how does a how does a timber guy follow up with somebody he did business for within 24 hours? The next morning he's sharpening his chainsaw and he's going out and cutting trees again. Right. So how in the world is he going to follow up and say thank you to somebody within 24 hours? He's going to show you for, right from the top of the tree with his smartphone. Great story. His name is uh, Dave Potter. Uh, if you have a chance, man, he's a great guy. It's going to be fun to have him on our show next week. That's a brilliant use of the program. Uh, brilliant use. And, and, and I, can, I just want to say one more time, I, I absolutely have loved the relationship that we've had with Send Out Cards. I'm here to tell you that there's probably no other product. I can't think of any other product that I have put in five of my books uh, other than you guys. So you, you're with a fantastic, it, you know, if you're a Send Out Cards representative, you're, you're in a fantastic organization. I absolutely love it. Love, love the product. Love what you do. Love your philosophy. Thank you, Ivan. Appreciate that very much. Uh, appreciate you. And uh, again, go to BNI.com. Learn as much as you can. Thanks, everybody, for being on the show. And we will see you next week. Take care. Thanks, Thanks Cody. Thank you.